We're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. We're doing all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls, catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, we're here at Best Tugs. If you don't know, we like to build aircraft moving equipment, but tonight, and I say tonight because it's already dark, and these ladders need to go in my pool at 7 a.m. when the train shows up. Um, as always, we're working late, so ignore the noise in the background. But this is the ladder, one of two ladders that go on each side of my 27-foot deep pool. It's 24 feet of water with a snow plant. And the way we did this is we drew it all in solid works and to kind of follow up to the top. You're going to notice that the ladder legs, I've still got to square it up, are actually key weighed in. If you look at that, it's got the radius of the three inch, eight inch thick stainless steel. And you can see here, there's little slots. So this actually notches, slots in, you open it up, you clamp both sides. It's a very heavy cage. It's much stronger than any ladder ever needs to be, except this is serving two purposes. This is actually going to be the guide for the pool floor that migrates up and down with a touch of a computer screen so that I can change the depth from full depth, middle, same depth across the whole thing, or bring it out of the water and turn on the kids' splash pad jets that jump across or just have it out of the water and put up some tables, have some extra entertaining area. So this is going to be the guide, but I think I've got it figured out. I don't think I want to use any type of bearings or anything that needs maintenance. So I'll probably machine some Garolite and some tracks that grab a hold of this ladder on both sides of the pool and keeps it clocked and from drifting. If you've seen some of the other videos, you can see how that works. And some of you even asked, why would you use four cables instead of three? Because three tends to keep all the tensions more even. It's actually because of this guide system. I have four cables so that at any point I want to replace a cable, I can disconnect one. Two are at opposing ends, and the floating platform is neutralized with one stabilizing cable still there. I can replace that cable. If I have three, if I ever had to replace the cable over time and I disconnected it, the entire platform would bind instantly with thousands of pounds of force down underwater if there was an accident and it broke underwater somehow. So the four is a redundancy option. If I lose any cable, it's just neutrally balanced off two opposing cables and it's also guided into position with the ladders on both sides of the pool. So. We have a lot of work to do. We got to put this together, weld it all up. It's going to be an all-nighter, I'm sure. Little things we did to help make this easier. You can see all the pipes, since we did it on SolidWorks, we could order it up with all the angles. This is the angle to match the radius of the concrete edge of the pool. But this other side is straight. This drops in right there. I can clock the angle here. And then I can slide this up and down and then set it in case there was any eighth inch, quarter inch variance in the concrete or more, and then we can burn it out. So this, this section right here will be done on site. So um, that's how that works. Other things we did to make sure it comes together easy. You can't get stainless steel long enough because of how tall this pool ladder is. So what I've done here, you can see this is the next section. I've got to turn it so these tabs are inside to grab the ladder legs. Nothing to measure, everything's preset. But then this will slide together. Everything will be clocked perfectly. Now, there is one other thing we gotta do at this end. I can show you how we clock this. Coming out of the pool, I want the kids to be able to climb up, or me as I become more senior every day. I wanna make sure that we can get out of the pool and that the rail continues and actually moves out of the water area onto the platform safely. So this, you can see the nice little fittings here and these holes on this end 
This is kind of big to grab. This size was more about the guide of the moving platform of the pool. This is for the handrail that's gonna carry up out of the water. But I wanted it to come out of the water without returning down onto my courtside patio. I didn't want things in the patio or people hitting their feet or even just sweeping around the pool. I didn't want it connected. So this gives me the strength to come out. If I clock these to the side, you can see I can fit this together. And now this takes care of my clocking right and left because it can't twist. The angle is a perfect fit right there. That's the angle coming out of the pool. And then on this side, there'll be a handrail that comes out, comes up and returns. That's an easier to grab handrail. So this gives me the strength without connecting to the concrete pad and the angles to put it together. I actually am fortunate enough to have my twin brother, Mark's boy, uh, Kaysen. He's gonna weld this up with a couple of the guys, the one holding camera right here. A couple of the guys in the shop are gonna stay late. While they're welding on this, I've gotta get the string lines done, some plumb bob set, start getting plates ready and mounted on the wall to receive the other ends of this. If everything goes together smoothly, by 7 a.m., if we're lucky, we'll have a little sleep. Kind of unlikely tonight, but <laughs> if we're lucky, we'll get some sleep. But tomorrow at 7 a.m., we're having a crane set to 30 plus foot tall ladders with the extension. You guys know the drill. That's a whole lot of talking. Back to work. <laughs> across the pool with plumb bobs down to the center of the main attach point of all the cables. That center stainless steel attachment that's in the concrete is absolutely perfect. So any imperfections in the pool walls that might be there, we have to base off of that, reference the ladder to that, and then two plumb bobs off the end. We got to really true it up because the platform that goes up and down needs to stay perfect and it rides on these ladders. So we're going to go ahead and got one end. Another one to go. I'm sure we're gonna be spending a few hours today getting this welded in time. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right guys, it's the middle of the night, but we're still going strong. We got the lights going. If you look behind me, we're getting the tile up. Starting to grout that in tonight, putting in a black grout. I don't look screen on the camera right here, but it's actually a black with a deep blue tint to it. If you look down behind me, way down there, <laughs> there's the bottom of the pool. Got the tile in the bottom of the pool. You won't even see that, it'll be covered, but we needed to be able to leave the scaffolding in and roll it around while we plaster the walls. So we couldn't plaster the floor and the walls because you wouldn't be able to move the scaffold around and spread the plaster. So it's actually a pebble finish. So we went ahead and tiled that floor you see right there. I'm starting to work on putting up the ladders. We uh, welded up through the middle of the night. Thanks, Kaysen, for doing that. And now I'm setting them and I'll start welding them in the rest of the way. Um, that's not where that ladder goes. It's just sitting there and tied up. I'm putting brackets in the walls and then I'll move it over and weld that up. So. We got a lot to do. Sunlight won't be here for several more hours, but I got more in me. Let's go back to work. My daughter over there working away, getting ready for the next layer of waterproofing. Ladders are getting closer. We got our help down on the bottom, setting a waterproof layer up to the steel joint between the concrete and the tile work in the bottom. This weekend we should be putting up stone. All right, guys, we're getting ready to put the plaster finish on the pool. That's happening in a couple of days. I got a couple finish up items. I got to get the LED lights installed, turned on and operational, both in the 
track that is a, a single piece LED around a couple layers of the pool. I got to get all the seven of the regular round type LED lights all multicolored in. Um, I've got them all the extra layers of waterproofing done, but the last layer on the bottom middle, this upper section of the pool, I'm going to do today as well. I've got to get this installed. This is the cable guides for the entire mechanism that raises the platform up and down. This has to go 27 feet from above water line through a tube that's outside the pool into the pool. And that tube could have water in it because the water is going to chase that opening that comes into the bottom of the pool. It will have water all the way up that matches the water level of the pool at the top. So these pipes continue several feet past that. On the upper layer level, you can see in the background where it goes up several more feet. That was part of the design to get the cables out of the water line. They'll come through this set of stainless steel, go over four pulleys, across over four more pulleys, turn back down another set of tubes that goes all the way back down into the basement where the controls that operate the moving platform are. So this had to be stainless steel. Uh, I can't have a crowd. I'm using a salt system in the pool for the purification. So it's stainless steel and to make sure I have backup to this waterproofing, um, once I install this stainless steel inside the four inch stainless steel large tube with these machine parts we made all the way down it that center it all up, I'm going to pour a two part liquid rubber and fill the entire void all 27 feet up. That's so that if there were ever a problem with these pipes corroding through, which isn't going to happen with this uh, stainless steel, it's the best you're going to get. Um, if we go through, if it did have a problem through this somewhere, a leak, then I have a rubber layer as a backup waterproofing. Beyond that is the solid stainless steel tube. Beyond that is the concrete wall that all that's poured into. So this, the idea is that it outlasts me, my kids and their kids if the house happens to stay in the family that long. So we should never have a problem with it, but once it's installed, it's never coming out. So better work right. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right guys, so I've now got the two-part epoxy set up inside here, almost that deep, to where the tube goes all the way up this wall. And it's got a little plate that catches the four tubes that come down and it'll bed in that epoxy and pull it outward and make a watertight seal. And then I'm gonna let that cure for a couple hours and then we'll start filling that entire column with uh, liquid two-part rubber. It will cure, even though it's clear full, it's, it will cure inside a closed container. That's why it's got to be a two-part. It can't air cure, it's, uh, the tube's too tall. So let's get that done. Back to work. show you what this looks like and it looks like it's out of square um, the way it's twisted but that's actually twisted and laser set oddly enough like eight months ago or something I don't remember how long it's been exactly when we poured all this concrete I preset this in bed plate and that goes down there's an assembly of pulleys that turn and go out into the pool and operate everything inside the pool Right here, you can see this holds eight pulleys and all the cables are designed to never be able to interact with each other in any way. That's why it's tubed all the way down. That's why there's round tubes inside a big tube. So now this will receive those cables individually into these slots, come up over four of the pulleys, across over four more pulleys. They're going to go down another set of tubes just like that that we'll call the dry side. That side is inside the house. So this will have water in it to the water line. This side will always be dry. Then this, if you look inside here, you can see pins. These pins are machined and set exact. So once this drops in there, the cables align perfectly centered and make no contact. So I've taken all the play out of it. But this is turned to the dead center of the pool, not relative to the tile that's making an arc. It's relative to hitting the center point of the cable split four-way. So 
I gotta pull this out, set another set of cables down this side, the dry side, fill the wet side with liquid rubber, back to work. All right, we're ready to pour six inches. And then wet it down as much as seven, well, maybe a little more there. We have a driveway. About to work. Well, one long day. We're done. It's kind of cool out, so I feel pretty good about letting it go overnight because I don't even want to walk on this yet. I'm gonna chalk the lines in a few hours just before dark and get them all ready for the saw cuts. And then we'll saw cut, um, start about a half hour before sun up and get all the saw cuts in. 44 yards today, about to work. So right now I'm getting ready to put in the skimmers. This pool has six skimmers. We made our own skimmer boxes earlier. You schedule 80 T fittings. And then I made my own skimmer entry. Now, normally on a pool, you have a flapper door that goes up and down with the pool level. So if there's evaporation or you're changing the level of the pool between when the auto fill brings it back up, it's always skimming perfectly. This one, that auto fill system works way down underground on the part of the pool that is two giant tanks, one for the pool, one for the hot tub, so that all the lines in this pool can auto drain if the power went out and winterize itself everything downhill slopes. So I don't need a skimmer door, I just need a fixed water line. And when the pumps turn on, they'll overfill over this and it will always waterfall. So it's a perfect skimmer because I'm taking water from a different source, overfilling the pool through the jets, waterfalls, anything I might have running, it will spill over the top. Once it spills over the top, it will go into that secondary skimmer source, which has got a adjustable level um, part that I made with a handle. I can pull it out and the handle through the middle is just to keep big objects from going down the pipe system. Anything that can get through the adjustable water level I'm gonna put in there that I can fix once I decide why, where I want my water exactly, I can fix it. Anything that can get past the handle that moves that can't clog the pipes because the pipe gets bigger and every skimmer individually runs, they aren't tied all the way into the water vault. So every single one of these skimmers waterfall. So anything that comes on the surface will skim no matter what. So I'm gonna glue these in. I machine these out of stainless steel. If you look close on the backside, you can see a little step. I made that so that I could get a little extra bonding agent in here in case this pipe wasn't quite flawlessly flush cut. It's really close, I could sand it, but I don't need to because I got this reveal in here. I'll bond into here. I'll push this in, hopefully not put it crooked. <laughs> and once that dries up, we're done. And then I did something else. I made all the tiles around the, the pool. I didn't want a plastic lid. <laughs> So when we cut the holes in the tile, we cut it out of the very stone so that my access to that secondary unit is right there and it matches the stone. So I'm gonna install this. I got six to go. We got four, several more projects, back to lighting, back to work. All right, next. up here what this wall looks like really heavy texture then we'll put a pebble finish on that that's right right there is an LED light ring that changes colors at mid depth and then there's another one right underneath that blackish blue tile at the top is another light ring 
Then you can see here the three waterfalls hanging over. Those have lights under them. And fire coming out of the top of those waterfalls. All right, guys, we're at the bottom of the pool. I'm super excited because I got a long night ahead of me, but tomorrow morning we are shooting the pebble finish on the pool, floor to ceiling, all the way out. I had to bring in some experts out of California, Arizona, and New Mexico, and a couple guys out of Salt Lake City to get a big enough crew here to do all of this. It's such an issue with the height. We got two sets of scaffolding. We got two crews going on the small end, three crews going on this deep end. And then right here, you can see I've got everything prepped for where the ladder goes. You can see these plates. This right here is stainless steel embedded in. Uh, it's an inch and a quarter thick plates for the base of the ladder. Right here, we have all the stainless steel that's for all the ladder patch points going all the way up. If they look extra strong, they are. Normally, a ladder just has a couple little small bolts in the pool. This one is the guide rail for the moving platform. It's a floating platform, we pull it down with cables, but imagine 27 feet up, that thing could move around. And it's gonna be pretty heavy, so it wouldn't move quickly, but I want it to be stationary. So this is built and engineered strong enough to have giant three inch stainless tubes and some Garolite that rides along it so that it stays fixed in place and it only goes up and down. So I made this extra strong. The way I made these plates work because the pool currently, until we put smooth it out, and make it perfectly round, has the bends in it from the two foot panels that made the concrete forms. And so what I did is I made giant stainless plates with a hole in the middle. Then we machined these brackets to go into that hole and have a big wide flange. And then I could slide this in and pivot it right, left, up, down. And because it's inside a pocket, then we could weld it out right here, and then it steps down to a smaller size. We went ahead and bored out the middle a little, just so when we fit drilled, we wouldn't have to drill through solid stainless, but it's still quarter inch wall tube now. And this ladder can be craned in after we plaster, and it just slides onto all of them perfectly with pins going in the top. Now for the engineering side, there was a little bit of a unique challenge. I needed this ladder to be able to expand and contract from if I shut this off in the winter or power outage, turned it down and the cut water got really cold, or if I turned it up to 104 degrees, which I will do the entire pool for a big steam winter pool party, hot tub, turn the whole thing into a hot tub, this ladder will grow. So what I did is the sleeves that go over this have quite a bit of play. They have double the play that the maximum thermal expansion that this ladder will grow in height um, inside the tube. So it, you would think it would be wobbly. It feels wobbly until the whole thing goes on. But since I put the holes in the top coming down for the pins that pin it, the ladder, the pins are, are perfectly drilled with no play. And so when you grab the ladder, you can't move it any direction other than up and down because the pin is going this direction. So this big play pipe can move up and down on a pin, but it can't move in and out or side to side because it's the exact same drill size. Hope that makes sense. When it goes on, I'll show you what I mean by it, how much play it has, but you can't move it any direction, but you could move it up and down on those pins. So lots of little engineering things. You may think that you could just put it on and weld it. You can't stop mother nature. Physics are physics. You just have to work with it. If I just put this on and welded it and got a massive thermal grow in the pipe, I would start cracking fittings, potentially cause uh, water to get inbound through the bolt lines. It could cause all kinds of problems or just, actually the way I've got it bolted, more than likely the ladder would just kind of S-bend, which would look like crap as well. So. Uh, that's a whole lot of talking. I'm super excited. We got a lot more to do tonight. Some LED light hookups, tubing, pump hookup, waterfalls. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right, guys. It's just after midnight, which is awesome because I thought we would be going at least till four or five. Things went really smooth. We just made our last big mess. Everything else in the pool is ready. 
Got a little taping we're doing off on the blue LED lights underneath. This mesh right here makes me super happy. This is a tube that goes to the basement. That's the dry side. This side right here is the wet side. That's got all these red tape balls at the top that are plugged in the four pipelines that go all the way to the bottom of the pool. We just poured just about six gallons of a two part liquid rubber that went into the two by four stainless tube and went around all the four stainless steel round tubes. So I had a square tube and then four round tubes. We filled that all with solid rubber. So it's permanent, done. And uh, gosh, next time I open up this thing, it'll be drop in eight pulleys to get up and over, down, run all the cables and tie in the connections underneath. So I'm pretty excited. Early night, just after midnight, I'm gonna get some good sleep, then back to work. <laughs>